Hello, it's uh, Paul Beck with uh, from the University of Ottawa. Um, this is part B of the of the uh, video on what's going on in the Atlantic and uh, Pacific, uh, the northern basins. Um, so this is where we left off, uh, showing the very contorted, very wavy, very broken up jet streams over the Atlantic basin. Um, and now, let me just get refresh this image. Okay, so what we have here is, this is the uh, surface temperature um, over the Atlantic uh, Basin. So what you can see, the surface temperature, um, th this is the atmospheric temperature, 14.1 um, degrees C here. You know, as you go up over Greenland, over Greenland right now, Greenland's, uh, you know, minus 16. Um, so there won't be a lot of surface melt on Greenland. Um, just uh, a lot, you know, a couple days ago, uh, the temperature was above zero over all of Greenland, and we started to get more melting. And 40% of the surface was undergoing melting, which is a very unusual event. Um, so what happens is, so you know, we can just look at to give you an idea of the scale. I mean, down here in Africa, you know, it's 34 degrees. You know, up here, um, you know, uh, what's that, uh, 34 degrees. So these areas here, you know, the UK um, and Europe, um, I don't know, is this correct? 5.7 degrees, looks pretty cold there right now. Well, that's what it's telling me. So must be night there or something, 10 degrees there. Um, and, and there is some uh, temperature uh, below zero. Blue is below zero, so there's, that's the only temperatures there. So that's surface temperature. Um, we can do the same thing uh, for the Pacific Basin. Um, and uh, so this is the uh, air temperature at the surface. Um, you can see all these low pressure areas. You can see up here um, over the uh, ice, it's just slightly above zero. So the ice is keeping it cooler up there. You know, when the ice is gone, early in the summer, you know, when it's gone um, sort of in September for the first time, and then, you know, a couple years later, maybe three months of the year, and then, you know, another few more years after that, six months of the year, pretty much all summer, then this basin, you know, won't th there won't be ice to uh, continue to keep it cool up there. So this whole area will warm, warm, warm hugely. Is that a word? Hugely warm a lot. Um, so you can see what the temperature is up here. You know, well above zero. You know, up in Alaska, uh, 14 degrees. Look how temp. Look how warm it is up in. You know, it's almost 20 right on the Arctic Ocean coast. You know, in parts of Alaska, it's 20, you know, it's 24 degrees. You know, go over to, uh, to uh, Asia, you know, and you can see uh, very high temperatures up here. Um, so so th these are the, uh, like I said, the air temperatures. Um, let's keep going. Okay, now this is the uh, mean sea level pressure. So the blue areas are basically uh, lower pressures the uh, well let's have a look okay what's this pressure here but uh, uh, 1003 hexapascals uh, one hexapascal is one millibar the average uh, surface pressure um, on the planet is about 1013 millibar or hexapascals um, if we go over here um, these areas are higher pressure Okay, so higher pressure here, lower pressure here. The air wants to move in, but because of the Coriolis deflects to the right, you get this rotation here. You get a cyclone here, cyclone here, cyclone here. This is going the other way. This is a high pressure area. So remember that the warm area is right over here. So these things are kind of skating around uh, the uh, warm area, and we'll look at we'll look at more of the circulation. I mean, what's interesting? Yeah, we'll look at the clouds in a minute. Okay, so sorry, um, let me get coordinated here. Uh, yes, uh, so over here, uh, back to the Atlantic Basin, and uh, 
here we have the it'll be it'll appear in a minute hopefully uh, there we go so mean sea level pressure in the Atlantic Basin okay so there's not as much structure as in the Pacific Basin I mean there's a really big high here um, really big high in the central area there's a strong low here um, this is normally called the uh, Icelandic low um, in the winter it sits over here um, right here it's it, you know it's this is the low that same low it's moved position um, and you can see that it's pulling uh, it's pulling air down from between Greenland and uh, Canada um, and then uh, you know it's combining with the warmer um, air coming up from the north um, so this is a this is a 989 this is a significantly cyclone it's 989 there on the outsides it's uh, 1015 so that's a, almost a 30 30 hexapascal difference so we're getting you know we're getting nice wind action here um, I'll move on uh, let's see what's happening in terms of water in the atmosphere if my mouse cooperates with me okay so what we have here is let's start looking to water so what this is is this is relative humidity so uh, these these light areas this is 96% uh, relative humidity um, so there's lots of water vapor in the air there's almost uh, it's almost a hundred percent in which case uh, you know there can't they can't hold any more water the water has to start coming out in precipitation so that's those areas these areas here are uh, well 78 in this case um, so we're over the ocean so it's humid it's certainly not dry you know what's this area over here um, this is lower okay this is probably this is warmer air coming here it's it this is a cooler area I guess um, and then over here you know we probably have close to we have close to 100 again so it's probably raining here you know, here it's probably raining uh, you know the African uh, monsoon or something um, coming across here um, okay so you can see the uh, relative humidity there and in the uh, Pacific Basin let's have a look at uh, what's going on so here these are the uh, areas that are close to 100 percent so you'll notice that the uh, you know um, that this area over here this is where the really high temperature anomaly is you know the four degrees and higher temperature anomaly it's just kind of sitting here so everything's kind of skating around it skirting around it now notice that the uh, the areas where it's going to be raining it's where where the relative humidity reaches close to a hundred so this area look at it it comes up here and it kind of teases California I mean nothing gets over there we've got this high pressure area here which gets the, which kicks the air up uh, we've got a low pressure area here, which uh, there's a low pressure area here, a weak one, which which reinforces the air moving up, and then there's one over here off Alaska, which kind of sucks the uh, and draws all that humid air out. So nothing's going on the continent. So massive drought in California, and it just this has been this pattern has been sitting here for a long time with this hot water pool there. You know why is the hot water pool there um, this is kind of a new feature um, you know it's it's uh, so anyway this this uh, real this this water laden air is just not going on to the continent and I can show that more clearly here um, okay so this is uh, this what this is is this is the amount of water <coughs> this is the total precipitable water um, so this is how much, um, 32.373 kilograms per square meter, you know, of surface area. Like at this, at this, like average, you know, from the top down. So you integrate over the Z or altitude and you get kilograms per meter squared equivalent. And you'll see over here, you know, it's gonna be even higher. So this is where the water is coming. And of course, none of it is, as I've explained, none of it is getting over to uh, California. Um, so let's have a look at this back in the Atlantic Basin. Um, and 
and uh, say, okay, so this is the what you can see. So there's there, there's water coming up here. So water moving up poleward is uh, bringing tremendous amounts of heat with it, um, and it's uh, so it's going to be warming the water coming down from the Arctic. So you know there's a lot of zonal flow here. There's a lot of heat transfer from lower latitudes to higher latitudes and lots of cold water coming from the Arctic southward which is equivalent to hot water moving northward um, and then what we'll, now what we'll have a look at is this is a cloud so this is the amount of water vapor in the clouds um, and uh, so what we can see here is you can see those areas of high relative humidity large amounts carrying large amounts of water vapor uh, you can see how the clouds are being, being are, are here, and uh, you get a low pressure area. So this is an area where it'll be raining a lot, um, and uh, there is some rain over here, um, and so on. But this is really the key for the California drought, going back into the uh, uh, Pacific Basin. Okay, so you can see these uh, clouds here, here. This is a warm pool. Um, area very very warm area um, so there's uh, you know there's a lot of water vapor coming up but it's just it's just not uh, it's uh, it, it's it's there's no clouds really I mean the clouds are coming this way so this is where the clouds are carrying the rain and uh, they're coming up and they're completely bypassing Calif California and, and the US here I mean, we get this high pressure area here, kicking it up, low pressure, reinforcing it, low pressure, sucking it over, um, and California gets no water. And again, this is a persistent pattern. So, so the key question is, you know, why is this, there this warm pool, you know, four degree anomaly. I'll go back, I'll show it again. There it is. You know, this water is very, very warm. As a result, California gets no rain, um, and there's there's a lot of similarities to the uh, you know Atlantic Basin, um, and uh, right here, you know, a lot of like this water is very uh, warm up here, and we know that Europe has had a, a very a very uh, you know fairly dry but uh, very um, warm uh, early summer. Um, so there's lots of questions, you know, how does this all relate to the sea ice decline? Because the sea ice decline is a root cause. Um, I would go out and argue that uh, sea ice decline, Arctic amplification is, is resulting in these pools of warm water at higher latitudes. I mean, the Arctic, the northern regions are warming, the water is warming uh, a lot outside the basins. And uh, this pool is then uh, responsible for uh, uh, this is also you know because the, the jets come from the Pacific this is disrupting normal jet motion and what by the time it reaches the continent over here and propagates it is very very distorted if you have some feature that causes the jet to dip down a huge amount it has to dip up somewhere else uh, to conserve the properties of the jet and it splinters and fractures and so th this pool here I would wager that it is it's it's the main reason why we're getting these the jets so distorted here and of course this is here because of the warming of the whole arctic and the whole arctic is warming because sea ice is declining so as sea ice progresses we're in for very interesting times um, and uh, i also have mentioned the impacts on food i think food is going to be a problem um, because of the flooding and the, the drought and also because of the uh, problem with bees, the drop off of bees um, and the pollination of, of flowers. So th thanks for now.